A sower went out to sow. Some seeds fell along the path, and others on the rocky soil. Still others fell among the thorns, and some on the good soil. Lord, as we gather for worship, make our hearts good soil. Welcome to Worship at Heart of Illinois Lutheran Parish. My name is Jeff Schlesinger. I'm the pastor at Emanuel Lutheran Church, which is south of Compton, Illinois, and First Lutheran Church, which is in Lee, Illinois. Those are the two congregations that make up Heart of Illinois Lutheran Parish. And I am going to serve as your worship leader today. With these worship videos, huh? Heart of Illinois Lutheran uh, is trying to do their best to make you feel that you are present with us for worship. Thus, we invite you to follow along uh, and participate as you watch this video. The liturgy is printed on the screen. The regular print is for the leader, uh, and we invite you to respond with, with what appears in bold. In addition, the words uh, for the music are also appear on the screen so that you're able to sing along. We are overjoyed that you're joining us for worship. You are always welcome. We also invite you to join us in person whenever you are able. We gather at Emmanuel each Sunday at 8.30 a.m. and at first at 10.30 a.m. During this season of Lent, we also offer Wednesday evening services and Holy Week services. Further details about those opportunities uh, will be shared later in this video. Thanks again for joining us for worship. We continue humbly coming before our God in confession, seeking God's forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who writes the law on our hearts, who draws all people together through Jesus. Amen. Amen. Held in God's mercy, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Holy God, we, we confess, confess that we are caught in snares of sin and cannot break free. We hoard resources while our neighbors are hungry and cold. We speak in ways that silence others. We are silent when we should speak up. We keep score in our hearts. We let hurts grow into hatred. For all these things and for sins only you know. Forgive us, Lord. Amen. Here is the flood of grace. Out of love for the whole world, God draws near to us, breaks every snare of sin, washes away our wrongs, and restores the promises of life through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with you. Let us pray. O God, rich in mercy, by the, by the humiliation, humiliation of your, of your Son, son 
you lifted up this fallen world and rescued us from the hopelessness of death. Lead us into your light, that all our deeds may reflect your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. from Numbers chapter 21. From Mount Hor, the Israelites set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. But the people became impatient on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people, so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it upon a pole. And whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. Today's Psalm is Psalm 107. Please respond by the whole verse. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good, for God's mercy endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord proclaim that God redeemed them from the hand of the foe. Gathering them in from the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some were fools and took rebellious paths. Through their sins they were afflicted. They loathed all manner of food and drew near to death's door. Then in their trouble they cried to the Lord. And you delivered them from their distress. You sent forth your word and healed them, and rescued them from the grave. Let, Let them give thanks to you, Lord, for your, your steadfast love and your wonderful works for all people. Let them offer sacrifices of thanksgiving, and tell of your deeds with shouts of joy. The second reading is from Ephesians chapter 2. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses, and we were by nature children of wrath, like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. 
the son of the reading. Jesus told the story of a sower whose seed fell along the path where birds ate it up right away. This is like those who hear God's word but don't believe. Other seed fell on rocky ground where it sprouted but was quickly scorched by the sun. This is like people who hear God's word and are excited at first but fade away as soon as trouble comes along. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew, but was choked out by the thorns. This is like people who hear God's word, but the worries of the world get in the way of making a difference. And other seed fell on the good soil. This is like people who hear God's word, believe it, and bear fruit. Thirty, sixty, and one hundred fold. Our Gospel on this fourth Sunday of Lent is from the sixth chapter of Mark. Please note that this is not the assigned Gospel text for the fourth Sunday of Lent, but it is the Gospel text from our Lenten series. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. Jesus said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they, they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them, saying many things. When it grew late, his disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now very late. Send them away, so that they may go into the surrounding country and villages and buy something for themselves to eat. But Jesus answered them, You give them something to eat. They said to him, Our we to go and buy two hundred denarii worth of bread and give it to them to eat? And Jesus said to them, How many loaves have you? Go and see. When they had found out, they said, Five and two fish. Then Jesus ordered them to get all the people to sit down in groups on the green grass. So they sat down in groups of hundreds and of fifties. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, Jesus looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to his disciples to set before the people. And he divided the two fish among them all. And all ate and were filled. And they took up twelve baskets full of broken pieces and of the fish. Those who had eaten the loaves numbered 5,000 men. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus the Christ. Amen. When I was an intern pastor, my congregation hosted a food booth at the county fair. They had been doing this for many, many years. Initially, it was a pie booth and was an activity of the women's group. But as the years passed and the, and the booth grew in notoriety among the fairgoers, with that, the menu expanded and, and it became a must stop for a meal and dessert for fair attendees. And it also became a huge money maker for the congregation. In fact, all members of the congregation were pretty much expected to donate a pie or other food item, or, or more preferably, and cover a shift or two as a worker while the fair was going on. Some resented this expectation, but to the community, English Lutheran Church was known as the church with the great booth at the fair. Congregations are 
often known by one thing that defines them. It does my heart good when congregations are known by one of their ministries rather than something that's superfluous to faith. For instance, I know a congregation which was known as the, the Church with the Purple Doors. I suppose one could argue that at least people knew about it. That's true, but having purple doors has nothing to do with what the church is called to be in the world. I felt much more comfortable about the notoriety earned by the first congregation I served after ordination. They were known around town for their annual turkey dinner. Each year, people would flock to the basement of First Lutheran, that's First Lutheran of Barron, Wisconsin, not the Illinois, but they would flock to the basement of First Lutheran for a turkey that had been smoked all day long. And, and they would enjoy good food, good fellowship, and, and be part of raising money for worthy causes. This type of identity is not actually a stranger to either of the congregations of Heart of Illinois Lutheran. For in days gone by, First Lutheran and Lee was known throughout the area as the church that held the Norwegian smorgasbord. And the ice cream socials at Emmanuel Lutheran were a can't-miss event for many a summer in the Compton and Paul Paul area. It's rather interesting that each of the events I've cited as positive vehicles of congregational reputation has to do with food. And that's probably not an accident. You see, food, as is the case with all creatures in the animal kingdom, is integral to our existence as human beings. So why am I musing on about feeding events by which churches become known? Well, it's because our gospel today tells the story of the penultimate church meal. And it was nothing less than a miracle. Jesus, as we hear over and over again in the Gospel of Mark, became very famous very quickly. And his fame undoubtedly spread on account of the many miraculous acts he was performing. We are pretty sure, though, that outside his death and resurrection, the miracle that Jesus was known for better than any other was this one, the one we heard in today's Gospel, the feeding of the 5,000. The miraculous story of stretching five loaves of bread and two fish far enough to feed 5,000 or more people is the lone miracle that appears in all four Gospels. If you polled people in the first century asking about the miraculous acts that Jesus did, virtually everyone who had heard about him would relay some form of his feeding the masses with just a small amount of food. Who was Jesus? Well, he's the one who died and was raised, but he was also the one who fed people. As we continue our journey this Lent through the miracles of Jesus, we now come to the one by which he may have been most well-known, at least while he was alive anyway. As we read it, we once again find that Mark is not just telling us the story of a miraculous act, but telling it in such a way as to guide and lead our faith. The faith imperative here could not be more clear, for it comes right from Jesus himself. You give them something to eat. When Jesus and his disciples are among people who need something to eat, Jesus does not allow the disciples to just send them away and fend for themselves. No, Jesus expects the disciples to provide for them. And as we have seen so often, the disciples respond with complete lack of faith. Rather than simply follow Jesus' instructions and assume that things would work out, as they always do when Jesus is around, they question him. How on earth can we do that, Jesus, they say. We don't have the kind of money it would take to buy bread for all these people. It's just not possible. Once again, the disciples are the example of a rocky soil described in the parable of the sower, not willing to roll up their sleeves and tackle an obstacle, but when trouble presents itself, throwing up their hands and giving up. 
Now, Mark does not include descriptions of emotional reactions very often, but but it seems to me at this point, Jesus would give a deep sigh of exasperation at the hard headedness of his followers. And reading between the lines, I can imagine Jesus saying, Do you still have no faith? Do you not remember what I did for the leper? Or the wild man possessed by the legion of demons? Or the paralytic that was lowered through the roof? Or for you all when we were in the boat? Let me show you once again, he would cry with exhaustion in his voice. And then he proceeds to feed everyone present with plenty to spare. The great sower of the seed, Jesus, is very clear here what sort of fruit he desires from the resulting plants. You feed them, he says. And since they don't believe that it can be done, Jesus sits all the people down and shows them that it can be done. You feed them, he says to his disciples. Then he proceeds to show them just how to do that. And we don't have to dig deep in this miracle story to discover what it is, what it is calling us to do today. For those very words that Jesus uh, spoke to the disciples, he also speaks to us today. You feed them, Jesus tells us. When you see someone hungry, when you host someone at your church or at your home, don't send them out to fend for themselves. You give them something to eat. Our call today is to follow Jesus' example and feed a hungry world. So good for my internship congregation for having such a great booth at the fair. And kudos on my first congregation for its annual turkey dinner. And three cheers for you first and a manual for smorgasbords and ice cream. But perhaps even more importantly, good on all of you for supporting with both your time and resources the local food pantries like Nice Center and the Mendota Area Christian Food Pantry. And bravo for supporting the ELCA World Hunger Appeal and other similar national and international feeding organizations. For a response to people who are hungry ought not be like the rocky soil disciples saying, we don't have enough. Rather, we ought to bear fruit 30, 60, and 100 fold, saying, with Jesus there is always enough. Let's make sure everyone has food to eat. And with that, let's pray. Graceful God, you have sown the seeds of faith into our lives and fertilized them with your Son, Jesus. We pray that we may be good soil, so that those seeds of faith grow and flourish and make a difference in the world. We pray through Jesus, our Savior and Lord. Amen. people through our baptism into Christ, living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. 
of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in God's promise to reconcile all things, let us pray for the church, the well-being of creation, and a world in need. Gracious God, your love unites. Give vision to the global church and foster cooperation and mission. Increase interreligious understanding and ecumenical dialogue. Make your church a sanctuary for all fleeing persecution, disaster, and war. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Creating God, your love enlivens. Restore balance to the earth's fragile habitats. Preserve wilderness lands, rainforests, and wildlife. Cleanse oceans and rivers. Make us good stewards of the earth. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Righteous God, your love liberates. We give thanks for those who courageously witness to your liberating love. Free all people from the evils of racism, religious strife, and hatred. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Merciful God, your love heals. Care tenderly for all those loved ones perished from pandemic disease in every nation. Strengthen health care workers, first responders, and caregivers. Relieve all who live with chronic illness and pain. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Incarnate God, your love enlightens. Open our hearts and minds to fresh understandings of our faith. Deepen our love for you and for one another. Teach us to pray for our enemies. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Abiding God, your love saves. Those who died in the faith are made alive in Christ. We give thanks for your promise that we will also be raised to newness of life. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Accompany us on our journey, God of grace, and receive the prayers of our hearts. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Let us pray. O God of grace, as we bring these fruits of our labor to you, 
Remind us that they have grown from what you have first given us. And as we place them before you, O Lord, we ask that you bless them so that they may become seeds for others, carrying with them your love and grace. We pray this in the name of the great sower of the seed, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Dear friends, we are God's own people, holy, washed, and renewed. God bless you and keep you, shower you with mercy, fill you with courage, and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.